All right, what I'd like to do is show you how to um, find the rule when given a, uh, a set of values. So remember, we're talking about relationships, right? And we're talking about how is our x values related to our y values, um, or how are our you know x values related to our f of x values, which is like the input and the output. So we need to find a way to write a relationship. And so far, remember, all the relationship is is how do one how does one thing you know relate to another? What do they have in common? Um, and we've learned about how to write different relationships as far as like an ordered point. Uh, like you can write these points as like x comma y. We wrote them as a graph. And also we wrote them as sometimes an equation, which we like to sometimes call a rule. So I'm going to work on this red one because I think it's a little bit simpler for you to see. Um, what I did is I chose the x values 1, 2, and 3. And then the output values, which we call our func f of x, are going to be 6, 7, and 8. So what I'm going to do is let's see how are they related to each other. And I look at number 1. If you go from 1 to 6, what do I have to do? How do they relate? You can say, well, you're adding 5, right? Um, and then does that work for the rest of them? Does 2 plus 5 give you 7? Yes. Does 3 plus 8 give you 7? Or give you 8? Yes, it does. So I noticed that my rule is going to be plus 5, but that's not your rule. You need to write it as an equation. So if you remember, if, um, what a function is, a function, our f of x is our name of our function or like we're going to call it like the name of the rule. So we're going to call this f of x. We're going to say f of x equals, so my output equals this number plus 5. So what I'm going to have to do is I need a way to represent all these different values. We know it works for 1, it works for 2, it works for 3, and subsequently it's going to work for the rest of my x values. So therefore I can say any value x, any number I plug in for x is going to equal my f of x. And let's just practice one again. F of, let's say, 3 would equal, remember you plug in your 3 for your x, plus 5. 3 plus 5 is 8. All right? If I wanted to find out other values, I would just plug in, you know, F of 4, and I'd find my other value. But when determining the rule or the equation, that's how I'm going to write it. Now, for the green one, it's a little bit more difficult because what I decided to do for here is kind of mix them up. These are in order, so it's kind of easy to see. These are not in order, so you're just going to have to work on one. Just pick one, pick one of these values, see how it relates to your y value, and then um, and then check the other values to see if it works. So up here, I look at this and I say, let's do um, let's do ten and seven. Those are positive. I like positive numbers. So to go from ten to seven, I'm going to have to subtract three, right? Now here, I don't use f of x. I use y, and they're kind of interchangeable. Um, and I'm just going to let you know, you know, they both represent the same um, values. For they're both your output when you're dealing with a, a relationship or, a, uh, or a, an output as your function. So I have minus 3. Well, let's see if that works for the rest of them. Does 1 minus 3 give you negative 2? Yes. Does negative 5 minus 3 give you negative 8? Yes, it does. So therefore, I can subtract the 3 from all these values, which we give our x. So if I say for any x value, for not any number x minus 3, it's going to give me these values, which we call y. So therefore, the rule for this one is y, minus, y equals x minus 3. The rule for this one is f of x equals x plus 5. And it doesn't matter. Like I said, the f of x and the y guys are just interchangeable with each other. Um, I could have changed that up and had it there. But that's how you find the rule with addition and subtraction.